Today, I have some exciting news. I'm not at a Tesla store. <laughs> you fool, didn't I? Could have put that in the thumbnail, though. Then it would have been clickbait. But anywho, hope you enjoyed the last vlog. It was very different from what I'm used to doing. Usually, things aren't very educational around here. They're more just, look at me, aren't I funny? But I thought it would be interesting because a lot of people didn't have that much knowledge about credit cards, and I think they're useful and dangerous and powerful and all that. So if you liked it, please let it be known. If you want to have more of them, you can contact me via Twitter with more ideas or maybe even tell me in the Discord if there's other things you have questions about, whether it's raising your credit score or why are there different tier credit cards, what are all the tiers, how many are there, and that kind of thing. We could talk about that later, but in today's video, I wanted to talk about something that I was thinking a lot about on my way back from the trip, which was this big announcement that kind of shook the gaming side of the internet anyway, which was that Ninja, the most popular streamer over on Twitch, which I am somewhat active on between Talos of Gaming and Tech, he was moving to Mixer, which some of you may have never Ever heard of Mixer. It's a live streaming platform very similar in both design and kind of functionality of Twitch, except it's owned by Microsoft. It was created by Microsoft, and it has a lot of first-party features with Xbox that makes it very easy to stream to. And in case you're a little bit out of the loop, Twitch was not that happy that Ninja was leaving, most likely because Mixer gave him a really good deal. No one knows the ins and outs of this contract, obviously, but I'm sure to offer Ninja, the largest and probably the most famous gamer in the world, that dude was on L in that dude was on TV shows of all kinds. Even like mainstream audiences were starting to figure out who this ninja guy was. They always ask him the weirdest things. They're like, so you, you play video games and you get paid for that? How does that work? How do you get paid for video? It's always the same thing. But he was very well known. So Mixer, in order to get that famous of a personality on their site, mostly gave him a big bag full of cash, potentially promised income month to month saying like, hey, if you come to Mixer, we'll give you this amount every single month, no matter what, as long as you keep streaming. Streaming. And with the size of Mixer not being that popular of a streaming site, it's also very possible they promised him equity in the company, meaning that all the revenue Mixer makes from here on out, whether new streamers go over there or more people join and Mixer generates more money, Ninja will more than likely get a cut of that revenue. So he kind of has like partial ownership in Mixer now. All of this is hypothetical. If you want to talk more about that contract and that deal, the Game Theorists did a really good video on the Ninja Mixer deal. I highly recommend you check it out if you want to know more about it. But when that happened, there was a ton of people that actually came to me because, you know, I like Twitch a lot and I've talked about on this channel even how much I like Twitch as a live streaming platform, how the monetization works and how I'm very happy with it over YouTube for live streaming purposes. And they came to me and they were like, are you switching to Mixer too? Now, this wasn't just because Ninja switched to Mixer. It was also because Twitch has been in kind of a lot of heat lately. They've been making some not so great decisions and no, I don't defend them. For one, when Ninja announced he would not be streaming to Twitch anymore, they started started advertising other Twitch channels on his offline channel, which they had never done before, never do on anyone else's channel, but they just happened to create a new rule that they can decide to promote other channels when your channel's offline at no extra reimbursement to the streamer. And of course, this was because I'm pretty sure Twitch was bitter about him leaving. They did invest a lot of time and money into Ninja, so I can understand why Twitch would be upset about him leaving, but what they did was not okay. And one of the worst things about it was they were promoting other channels on his page and one of them ended up being very explicit and let's just say not family friendly. If you know the story, you know how bad it was. If you don't know, don't look it up. All you need to know is that it was not okay and it was content that's not allowed on Twitch or YouTube or Mixer. Just not family friendly content, okay? I think you get the picture. So obviously they took it down. They stopped doing that. Ninja was very upset because he kind of prides himself as a family friendly streamer. That's in more recent years. If you go back to earlier Ninja or if you look at Ninja After Dark, there's some not so great things, but there's also a lot of talk about there being double standards over on Twitch. There's a lot of things they're seeing female streamers get away with that male streamers get punished for. That could be a whole video on its own. I don't want to get into it, but regardless, there was a large following of people on Twitter that were tweeting all about Twitch is over and Twitch is making these horrible decisions and they have a double standard and they're screwing their streamers and that's not okay. So everyone boycott Twitch. Mixer's great. Let's all move to Mixer. Mixer's the better platform. And a few people in my audience were part of that for a little bit and they started asking me, Drew, do you want to switch to Mixer? Or some of them went as far as to say, when are you switching to Mixer? I'm not. 
okay? Let's just get that out of the way. It's not that simple. You can't just have a few people with double standards get kicked off the platform or have the largest personality on the platform decide to leave and then everyone else has to follow them. For one, there's a few reasons that Mixer, while it is built pretty well and it has a decent community, isn't necessarily the best idea for me to do. For Ninja, it was most likely a great idea. Mixer is a much smaller community than Twitch because obviously social medias most of the time are kind of random in which ones blow up and they were trying to help theirs blow up by getting Ninja over there. Very well-known streamer. So they were likely giving him really, really good benefits with awesome immediate cash, probably monthly income, guaranteed. And if you've seen the kind of binds Ninja's been in the past, like if he doesn't stream for two days on Twitch, he can like easily lose tens of thousands of dollars, which meant that he was just kind of bound to his desk, required to play Fortnite on end. And anytime he tried to stop playing Fortnite, he would lose thousands of dollars. Plus his numbers have been going down a lot lately. He's kind of the classic example of someone who grew a little bit too fast, which obviously when you burn a little too bright, that means that you can't sustain that burn. You can't keep up that hype, keep up that fame for that long. And with Twitch, that's kind of important to have people always watching you and always Twitch priming you. And since its numbers went down so much, a smaller streaming site coming to you with a lot of money and saying, hey, we'll pay you this much no matter what. Plus you get equity in the company that gives him a bit more freedom. So he doesn't have to worry about always streaming the same game at the same time every day. He has a bit more flexibility because he probably has a bit more guaranteed income. That's all great for Ninja, but they're not offering that to me, okay? I'm not getting any of that. And because I'm not getting any of that, that means that anytime, you know, you shift media platforms, whether you're switching from YouTube to Twitch or Twitch to Mixer, you take the risk of losing significant portions of your audience. You know, I have around 170,000 subscribers on YouTube, and how long have I been promoting my Twitch in a lot of my videos? I've been doing Twitch streams for the tech channel for over a year now, definitely over a year as an affiliate and as a Twitch partner, and still in my videos, whenever there's an Apple event, I tell everybody to go follow my Twitch, or sometimes I'll just occasionally go people to go follow my Twitch in my videos for more live content whenever I do a YouTube live stream. And I always tweet when I go live on my Twitter, which just reached like 16,000 followers. Despite all of that promotion for the past 12 months, my Twitch account has yet to hit 6,000 followers. I'm fine with that because the income for it and the community for it has been really good and I'm happy with it, but that just goes to show you anytime you want your audience or you want your members to come with you to a new platform, to download another app, to make another account, account and learn a new site with all of its different quirks and features and differences with the site they're used to, you will always lose people. So despite the big audience I have on YouTube and asking a lot of them to come over to Twitch or all of my followers on Twitter, letting them know that I am live on Twitch doesn't matter because some people are simply lazy and I'm not blaming you for that. I'm the same way. There's a lot of communities I watch that want me to go download this other app to watch their content or experience this content elsewhere. And I'm not always that invested into them. So there's no hard feelings there if you don't want to go to Twitch or you don't want to move with a creator to whatever platform they want to stream or post content to. It's just something you have to factor in for. So if I were to decide, hey, you know what? Mixer is the new coolest thing. I want to go be a mixer -er, or mixer streamer, whatever the term is. That means I'm going to have an even smaller chunk of my audience, probably having an even smaller following than what my Twitch following already has. So you take the risk of making an even smaller community, which when you have less people watching, Watching, that means less people supporting you, less people donating, and overall less income generated. I'm not saying Twitch is a perfect streaming site. And after what they did to Ninja and some of their double standards on their site, they have a lot of problems. And it was kind of depressing to see that the people in charge at Twitch are prone to making just as big of mistakes as YouTube does. But a lot of the time, people forget of the size of these networks. A lot of people say like, YouTube sucks and they're stupid, but no one really can compete with them because of YouTube's sheer size. There's so many people on the platform that if you want your content to be seen by the most amount of people, YouTube's where you're gonna have the most amount of luck. It's kind of a similar argument with Twitch versus Mixer. Yeah, sure, Mixer may have a really good site and it's designed really well and they're working on monetization for people. And honestly, after looking at their monetization program, it's very similar to Twitch. You buy in-site currency and donate that currency or you can have a monthly recurring subscription to streamers you like. All 
of that somewhat the same, but the Mixer community, from what I've gathered online, is pretty significantly smaller than Twitch's online community. Now, sure, Mixer is growing, but you also have to factor in Twitch is also growing. Maybe not at the same rate, but Twitch has over 100 million monthly active users. Mixer is around 20 million, meaning it's about the fifth of the size of Twitch, just because of how long they've been around and how they've been encouraging their affiliates and partners. They get settled there, they get comfortable there. And I think the real huge advantage Twitch has over Mixer is actually the Twitch Prime support. That's a huge chunk of my revenue over on Twitch, and I think it's a really compelling one. The fact that anyone with Amazon Prime is able to support me for free at no extra charge is a very compelling reason to keep streaming on Twitch and not move to Mixer, because Mixer doesn't have something that can rival that. If you want a recurring monthly subscription on Mixer, your viewers have to pay for that. It's not something included with the subscription service they already have. And Mixer's trying to incentivize people right now by offering a free month where you get to support someone for free just by signing up. And I'm sure they'll grow and they'll improve and they'll do their best to make it better. But ultimately, if Twitch started doing something that was really bad for me personally and it started affecting my revenue, or maybe the staff and the people at Twitch just did something so horrible that we decide to boycott the site as a whole, they've done some bad things, but I don't think it's enough to warrant like an entire website boycott, then I would more than likely go back to streaming on YouTube because that's where my dominant audience is. Now, I prefer Twitch because of the way they work with their bit currency and how it's a bit more honest in the chat with how much the creator is getting. Plus with the Twitch Prime support, which is so convenient and helpful for lots of my fans who want to support me. They're paying for Amazon Prime anyway. Might as well include an extra perk there at no extra cost. Plus it's a much larger site than Mixer. So you have better chances of being discovered on there. You have better chances of people following you and watching your stream. So your numbers will be better. But if I did have to switch away from Twitch, I would just go to the site that's bigger than both of these. YouTube has over a billion monthly active users. Yes, literally more than a seventh of the entire planet. YouTube is huge. It's enormous. So if I was to switch to a site that I was going to live stream on more regularly, it would be YouTube. Not Mixer, not DLive, not Instagram Live. Though I was thinking it'd be kind of funny given Nick A30 just announced he's switching to Twitch because Twitch was panicking over the ninja move. They decided to offer some YouTube gaming streamers big checks so that they would move over to Twitch so people would still feel like they're current and new and fresh. Feels like it's becoming a meme at this point. So I was thinking we could make a joke video where it's like, Talos of Gaming is switching to Instagram Live. We're gonna do portrait mode gaming only because it's the superior live streaming platform. I just feel like everybody's doing it now. Everybody's got to switch to a new streaming site. It's just the cool thing to do. But anyway, I thought it was an interesting topic. I like talking about these kinds of things because they always stir up discussion, like switching platforms and where we're distributing our content. But no, I won't be switching to Mixer and it's not against anything Mixer does or about Mixer's people. It's just focusing on the revenue that your brand generates and focusing on the size of the audience you're catering to. Twitch is already a very small fraction of the size of YouTube, but it still remains a monetizable platform that's very fair and has been very good for me so far. If it comes a time where Twitch decides to screw me over and suddenly it doesn't make sense to keep streaming on there, then I'll go back to YouTube because there's a huge amount of people over there. And I also like to occasionally stream on YouTube anyway, just so that my dominant audience is aware that I do live streams and if they want more of them, they can go watch me on Twitch. Hope that explained some of the situation to you or maybe you have some food for thought to think about now for other creators streaming out there. And I appreciate you all watching. Hope you have an excellent day. Take care.